Hey guys, this is Wave618. It is the 10th of June 2019, just gone 20 to 9 in the evening BST. So this is actually a re-recording. I did do a video earlier today. However, the quality of the video was poor, it was lagging a lot, so hopefully we'll have much better luck this time. Um, yeah, so let's see how it goes. So today's video we're gonna be looking at Bitcoin. I'll quickly run through my long-term count for new uh new people on the channel. And but the main thing that we're going to be addressing in today's count was we're going to be looking at this uptrend and determining whether the uptrend is still intact, whether we have seen the low on the short term time frame, and where we can expect price to be heading from here onwards. And to justify the technical analysis on this chart, we'll have a brief look at Ethereum also, just to get a good idea of how price action is playing out there. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested, stay tuned. Alright guys, so let's get started. So as I said, uh, if you're new to my channel, I'll just quickly explain the uh, the drawings that you can see before you on the chart. So uh, first of all, for the whole move down from $20,000 down to 3.2k, I've got this WXY, uh, WXY wave count drawn out. So this is a, a three wave count W, followed by our X wave, which is a descending triangle. That's A, B, C, D and E. And then we've got a final three waves down to make our Y wave. All right, so basically the purpose, the, the great thing about having this Elliott wave count is it allows you to draw on this pitchfork. So this is the way I apply my pitchforks. I use the first two waves of the Elliott wave count to draw on the pitchfork. So I use the, the start of the first wave to plot the first points, the first pivot. Uh, second pivot will be at the end of the first wave and the end of the second wave will be where I place my third pivot. You then get your pitchfork drawn out. In this case, we've got a shift pitchfork, which is commonly used for uh, corrective price action. And you can see price came down, came down very nicely and tested the median line where it eventually found support. There was also a very nice Fibonacci uh, relationship between wave Y and wave W in that wave Y is a 0 0.382 Fibonacci extension of wave W. So not, lots of nice confluence from the pitchfork and the Elliott wave point of view. Um, so then, yeah, since then we've seen uh, an initial impulse up here, corrective price action, and then I've got this all as being one uh, consistent wave going up to here. Now there was obviously a lot of speculation as to whether this was uh, the top of perhaps a wave three and whether we we're gonna see a major retracement. I'm going to explain in this video why I still believe that wave three is going to continue higher, um, or at least there's a good shout for that um, at this moment in time. Uh, we're still adhering to this upward trend, which I will explain in a moment. Uh, but yeah, as I say, we've got this is a wave one, wave two. Price up to here was just over 4.236 extension. So if we just plot our Fibonacci extension tool. You can see here we just slightly overshot the 4.236. Now it's important to remember that this is Bitcoin and it's or crypto in general. And um, generally, you do get these fib extensions that are much more uh, hyper extended than your conventional fib extensions in other markets, such as your stock markets, uh, forex, or uh, commodities. So it's not too surprising. You can often see the 6.84 extension here or even higher. Certainly not surprising at all, especially considering the fact that we broke out from this downward pitchfork. Once the warning line breaks out, it often marks the end of the downtrend. And this is where I shifted my bias from bearish to bullish because of the break in this um, the break of this pitchfork. And you can see how price almost turned vertical on the breakout of this pitchfork actually cut through this horizontal resistance very, very cleanly, uh, which is actually something that took me by surprise. I did expect it to offer a bit more resistance. However, it broke through and now this level is acting as support. As you can see, we've got a wick down here. So I guess the important thing now is to determine, are we gonna continue moving higher, 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 or are we gonna roll over from here? This, this is the key question that we have. 
Uh, and I'm going to explain to you why my preferred count uh, is that I believe that we're going to continue higher from here. So as I say, this is my wave one, this is wave two, and we're currently in wave three. Now my wave count, my sub wave count for wave three is as such. Um, so actually let's zoom in on the four hourly, make it a bit clearer. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so we've got five waves up here. One, two, three, four, five. So this can be our wave one. Then we come down in three waves to make our wave two. From here, we go up and form our wave three. Uh, you can just about see if we do a Fibonacci extension of wave one. So 1.618 brings us to this level. So this is where I've got my wave three. Then we've got wave four forming this running flat. So A, B, C. And it's at this point that I'd say the wave four finished to form that running flat ABC. And it's from here that I'd start counting my fifth wave. Now, fifth waves in crypto uh, are usually the most extended of the waves. And so it is obviously looking disproportionately larger than the preceding first three waves. Uh, this is my wave count that I've got for the fifth wave. So I've got this is our wave one, two, three up to here. And then this price action following on from here is a wave four. So this is our A, B and C. Now I was expecting C wave to come down lower. And I'm going to give an explanation for why I think it's kind of truncated at this level. So, so if we say our final leg up for the wave three is our one, two, three, four, finishing here. Uh, the argument now is that we're going to push higher from here onwards. And you can see that we're finding support off the lower median line. So this pitchfork is an original pitchfork, typically used for impulsive price action. And to draw it, we've used the, uh, the first two waves. So first pivot at the beginning of the first wave, second pivot at the end of the first wave and the third pivot at the end of the second wave. And you can see price has really adhered to these lines very nicely. The warning line was tested very nicely here. Price then shot up very nicely, hit our median line. Um, and so you can see time and time again, these lines are acting as excellent uh, support and resistance. You can see here, I remember posting on Twitter that people should uh, have caution at this point because we've tested the warning line. And what did we get? A big, we got a big pullback and we actually tested the, the lower median line. Um, we've since pushed on from there and we've come down and again we're finding support at the lower median line again. So it was the, uh, there was a lot of ambiguity about this wave count. I can see a lot of people that have been confused on Twitter judging by the different counts that I've seen. Um, let's zoom in a little closer. So going in on the one hourly time frame. <clears throat> so I've got this as my A wave down to here. B wave looking, you know, more slower, more sideways in nature and more corrective, typical of a B wave coming up higher than the preceding wave three. And um, and then I was expecting a five wave move down in more of a diagonal fashion. However, we didn't really see that play out. You can, and I'll show you how I was looking at it. I was expecting price to give moving um, with rather converging price action, as you expect to see in a uh, diagonal. So I was expecting it kind of to adhere to these trend lines. So it's been a one, two, three, four, five to come down lower. Uh, not quite so low, but perhaps as low as the, uh, the lower warning line here. This is what I was looking out for. However, as you can see, price kind of truncates here. Uh, it started to move up and it's actually moved up above this trend line. And if we go in on the 15 minute, you can see there is a bit of volume coming in. It's not too significant at this moment in time, but we'll have to wait and see if more volume picks up. Often going into wave fives, just after a wave four, it takes a bit of time for volume to kick in. It's not like just after a wave two where you see your wave three and usually because the wave two is so deep, you see a lot of volume spiking price back up. In the following a wave four, it takes a bit of time for that volume to come in as price goes up a bit more slowly, uh, forming the wave five. Um, all right, so 
obviously it's never nice to suggest that we're seeing a truncation. I'm going to explain why I think this is going to be a truncation um, and why we're not going to see a further move down. Main reason is because it's always important to use correlating charts when you're analyzing markets. I've always been a big fan of that. Um, and so uh, Ethereum is one chart that I've had a close eye on. So uh, at this point, I think it'd be good to just have a quick look at Ethereum. And so what I'm going to show you, first of all, if we go on the daily time frame. So with Ethereum, again, you've got your downward pitch for price really adhering to these lines very nicely. Then we formed our bottom and we got our first two waves up here. In fact, let's tidy this up a little bit. Zooming in a bit. So first two waves up. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. Then we've got this original pitchfork and you can see price kind of drifted sideways. This is what I really like to look for in uh, when I'm looking for good setups. I like to see uh, the original pitchfork being adhered to I love to see it when the warning line is getting tested. And the reason being is it means there's a lot of upside to come because really we should be testing the median line. Now there is obviously the possibility of the warning line breaking and we come down. And for me, that would suggest uh, a much further uh, retracement in crypto, uh, especially Ethereum, but in crypto in general. Uh, I think we can now consider Ethereum with it having a rather large market cap, another benchmark within crypto. Of course, it's... Um, Market cap isn't uh, as significant as Bitcoin, but it is another very significant market uh, with some very important fundamentals. Uh, and uh, yeah, I really do think it's a chart that should be uh, recognized and regarded very highly uh, because I think it will be a leading or a benchmark uh, chart. So <clears throat> as I say, we're at the lower warning line here and there's not really any further room to come down further. So we're right at that mid, uh, the lower warning line. And what happened, so I'll zoom in here. Let's go in on the four hourly. Okay, now, as I mentioned with Bitcoin, we had that running flat, um, which got truncated. However, you can see here, I've got an A, B, C play out for Ethereum, but here you can actually see it's completed. So we've got that, uh, for the final wave C, you've got five waves down, the one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and it actually came slightly out of the pitchfork, yeah, but no major high time frame closes outside of the pitchfork and, pitchfork, and now we're actually back inside the pitchfork, which is a show of strength. Obviously, we want to see that hold if it is to be bullish, and obviously, if price comes down any lower than here, that invalidates this whole count. Um, but um, yeah, what I'm saying is if Ethereum has completed its correction, then it's unlikely that you're gonna see Bitcoin further correcting. For that reason, I do think price got absorbed on Bitcoin and formed that truncation. And another explanation for that, if we go back on Bitcoin now, this was a very significant level here. So we're looking at around, sorry, the scale's a bit distorted here. So this is around 7,500 here. You can see bright, uh, sorry, price bounces off this level several times, almost like a triple bottom at this level. Um, and when you see double bottoms, triple bottoms, always take into consideration the possibility of a truncation. Of course, the alternative argument is that we're consolidating going sideways below a key level around 7,500, and then that level is gonna break. That's always a possibility. As I say, Ethereum is pushing towards its lower warning line, it looks like if it is to go any further down, it's going to come down quite significantly. For that reason, I think there's going to be a lot of buying pressure in uh, Ethereum, but across crypto in general. And I think that is generally what we've seen and why we've seen this truncation in Bitcoin. Um, of course, the lower median line is also acting as support and absorbing this selling pressure here. Um, so yeah, as I say, this is a significant level. Why is it a significant level? So first of all, if we go on our monthly time frame, uh, let's just clean the chart up. So taking off all the annotations. So if we actually go one year back, so we're in June, obviously, and if we go back to June 2018, uh, so I believe, so this is our May 2018. If we look at the candle close, so where did it close? It closed at, um, 
7500. Sorry, the scale on the right hand side is a bit distorted. Um, it sometimes does that, but uh, basically this is 7500, this candle close here. So it's, it's pretty much exactly a year ago. This was the, uh, the May close and obviously the June open at the same level. And again, the September high is also, well, it's at 7400, but uh, also very close to that level. And you can see here, this is where um, Bitcoin actually found support, 7500. So that's that level that I was talking about where we seem to be bouncing off when we look, look at it on the shorter time frame. So 15 minute chart. Sorry, let's go on the four hourly. So it's this level here. This is our around our 7500. So it's been a key level in the past. Last year, very key level. And you can see, in fact, let me just put a line on the chart, horizontal line. Okay, it's brought back all the drawings now. But basically, you can see here, tested, tested, tested. Here it acted as support. Here it acted as uh, resistance. Um, so it's, it's a very, very key level, it's 7,500. Also, it's a psychological level, 7,500, it's a nice round number. Um, so it's not too surprising it's uh, acting as a, a significant um, support at present. Um, on top of that, another indicator that I often like to use, again, let's clean up the chart, um, are, I think it's best seen on the daily time frame, are Camarilla pivots. So these are the, um, something that you might not be that familiar with. I don't see other traders using them anywhere near as much as they should be, in my opinion. Uh, I think they're really valuable um, levels. Essentially, you've got a range from going R1, R2, R3, R4, S1, S2, S3, S4. So S stands for support, R for resistance. So these lines are drawn automatically based on the preceding uh, price action from the previous range. Uh, when we're on the daily chart, the range actually covers a whole month. Yeah, so it's taken into account the previous month's uh, price action. You get these lines then drawn on. And you can see basically when you hit the S3 or the S4, the idea is that these levels are likely to act as support. And if you get if you hit the R3, R4, these levels are more likely to act as resistance. And when you break out of R4 or break below S4, that basically suggests that you've broken out of this range and these levels then act, for example, if you break below S4, that can often act as uh, resistance. And if you break above R4, that level can then act as support. For example, you can see here, price breaks out of R4 and what does it do? It comes right down and tests the R4 level. So they're very, very useful. Um, so you can see here, another bit of support, supporting um, a supporting indicator suggesting that uh, Bitcoin may in fact have found a bottom at this level. So I'm giving you a number of different things to think about here. So obviously correlating charts suggesting that Ethereum has completed its corrective price um, uh, wave four. We've got the, uh, if we just bring this on, we've got the lower median line, the pitchfork acting as support. We've got this wedge being broken out of. Uh, we've got the monthly close from May 2018 also acting as support. So various levels of support. And for that reason, I am I did decide to get in on this. Um, obviously, invalidates when we get 7,500 taken out, if we come down any lower. Um, but the upside, so obviously previously I was looking at 9,400 as a relatively modest target. Uh, we have obviously retraced since then to make a more complex wave four. Um, but yeah, I think now that we've consolidated quite a lot, we can see price going way, way beyond 9,400. So I expect at least to take out the previous high at around 9,000. 9,400 being the next key uh, resistance. But as I say, because we've consolidated here, this is enough energy and cause to have a greater effect and drive price higher. Next, I wouldn't say next, but a very key resistance level is at 11,700. It is, I, I would not be surprised for us to see price go that high at all. Um, but we'll we'll take it one step at a time and wait for more price action to come in. We'll count the wave count as price develops. Uh, at the moment, we just want to see more volume come in and obviously this uh, 7,500 level hold. Um, but yeah, I've given several reasons as to why I think Bitcoin is bullish at this point. Um, so yeah, that's my reasoning. Um,
one other thing, just want to look at the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. So again, let's just tidy up the chart. Uh, let's zoom out. We'll go on the weekly for this one. So with this chart, what we've got. So you can see this chart has been downtrending. Again, we've got like a WXY play out coming down here and you've got your lower lows, but now we're kind of, it's very obvious. You can see price kind of curving out, making a curved out bottom, basing out here, basically suggesting a bit of a, ch um, a change in momentum, obviously, of the of the, the downtrend, likely to switch eventually to an uptrend. So we're likely to see, essentially, money shifted more into Ethereum and rather see Ethereum push up more so than Bitcoin. And that does make a lot of sense. Reason being, if we looked at the Ethereum chart, um, Ethereum has pushed, rather than gone straight up, as I say, Bitcoin has been adhering to, for example, the median line went as high as the upper warning line, whilst Ethereum has really stayed close to the lower warning line. It's basically been coiling, it's been consolidating, which means that its upward thrust is likely to be more aggressive than that of Bitcoin. And for that reason, I'm more focused on Ethereum than Bitcoin because I think it's got a lot more upside. And this Ethereum Bitcoin chart would suggest that also because you can see here, I mean, I mean, we can look at the RSI. I don't generally rely on these momentum oscillators because you can see with the naked eye that price is really basing out. But you can see here, we've got a low here and a low here pretty much at the same level. Uh, but on the RSI, you've got the low here and a much higher low here. So this is our bullish divergence and we can see a nice green candle when we got that divergence uh, supporting the fact that this is you know, starting to, to shift uh, more to the upside. I am now waiting to see you see uh, a higher high, higher than this high and then followed by a higher low uh, to, just to confirm that breaking market structure. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. As I say, Ethereum is um, the one, the chart that interests me more. It's, it's done a more regular uh, completion of its wave four. Um, whilst Bitcoin, it's never nice to see a truncation because it, it always makes you question whether it is a true truncation or not, or are, or are we gonna see a further uh, wave down? It kind of distorts your Elliott wave counts. But I hope I've been clear as to why I think it is a truncation at this level. And of course, I think I've been clear that if we take out 7500, then this is all invalidated. But that's the trade that I see at present. Um, so yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. I'm hoping that this video is a lot better than my last video, which was very laggy uh, for some reason. I'm not too sure. Hopefully this one's okay. If you found value in the content, then leave a like. If you've got any queries, then please uh, put them in the comments below. And um, yeah, until next time, guys. All right, take care.